CTV News at 5 with Hudson Mack. Different kind of a water problem in downtown Victoria today. The city had a gusher on its hands this afternoon when a major water main burst. It was kind of like Victoria's version of Old Faithful at the corner of Pandora and Cook just after lunchtime. Water was gushing out of the line, spewing about a meter into the air. What goes up must come down and must run downhill. There was so much water it began to flood the surrounding area and rolled into traffic. The city of Victoria says there were no homes or businesses damaged, uh, damaged and it appears the water came from a damaged fire hydrant. But a fire hydrant may have been impacted by a vehicular accident at some point and it's not reported to the city um, and then often it will fail. There's no obvious impact to this fire hydrant so the crews will be digging it up tomorrow to get a better idea of why that uh, leak would have occurred. Crews will be back at the scene investigating the cause of the rupture and working to repair the line and clean up the mess. So expect delays downtown of Victoria around Cook and Pandora tomorrow. A group of rescuers worked with a purpose to save a distressed porpoise this afternoon. It was found beached on some rocks off North Saanich. Members of the BC Marine Mammal Response Network got to work, sprung into action to try to make it comfortable. So far the breathing has been quite consistent since we got here. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen some blood um, that was on the rocks and so there are some wounds externally um, and we're not sure about internal wounds. Um, we've just been keeping it afloat and we've had some blankets underneath just to buffer from the rocks and make sure that it doesn't get any more injuries um, and just making sure that it can still breathe. They sprang into rea in reaction to the uh, situation. The porpoise was moved out of the water, loaded into a canoe and taken to the ferry terminal nearby to meet a crew from the Vancouver Aquarium where it'll be checked over and nurtured back to health and later released. Well, we're a day closer to the long weekend. Easter is almost upon us and more vehicles of all description will be on the roads. And with the increase in traffic, of course, comes an increase in crashes. ICBC says the Easter weekend is traditionally and statistically uh, one of the most dangerous on the road. The numbers are sobering. ICBC says four people die on BC roads every Easter weekend. And more than 600 are injured. 2,200 vehicles are involved in crashes. But police say it doesn't have to be that way. You can prevent a crash by mapping out your trip, preparing for bad weather, and keeping enough distance between your vehicle and others on the road. And the best advice of all, perhaps, is to slow down and focus on your driving. BC's Children's Watchdog says the government is failing to live up to its own minimum standards of care for BC's most vulnerable children. In her latest audit, Mary Ellen Trapel lafond says only five of the care plans created for 100 children in government care meet the standards set out by the Ministry of Children and Family Development. Government is failing to meet its own established standards and more pointedly is not coming close to satisfying the standard of prudent parent in caring for children who are in continuing custody. Trapel lafond makes 10 recommendations. One of them urges the ministry to spend enough money to reinforce its own planning standards. She also suggests changes to social workers' hours to make it easier for them to work with children and families. A First Nation from the west coast of Vancouver Island signed an agreement with the province today, marking a major step forward in the treaty process. The Dittadat First Nation signed an incremental treaty agreement which will give it three sections of land amounting to more than 420 hectares. The parcels are located near Nittanad Lake on southwestern Vancouver Island and will help the First Nation to create more economic and cultural opportunities. I also want to acknowledge our elders that have gone before us in regards of setting all the information, all the history that we've been told throughout the years in regards of the land that we once owned in the Nittanet Lake area. It's been a long time, long, slippery slope that we've been on dealing with the governments in regards to trying to get a treaty and trying to better our lives for our people and our community. These incremental treaty agreements allow First Nations to benefit from land ahead of the final agreement. Once the land is transferred, it'll be subject to federal and provincial laws as well as to zoning and taxes. After the final treaty is signed, the parcels will be treaty settlement land and not reserve land. Thank you for attending our community and urban meetings. Meantime, the Pachita First Nation has also signed an agreement with the province. It will receive three parcels of land southeast of Port Renfrew, totaling nearly 600 hectares. They are transferring these lands as an act of good faith. It also shows our people that the past 16 years of this negotiation has not been for nothing. The ITA lands are beautiful. 
They are situated in one of our most valued part of our traditional land. We will use these lands to develop ways to showcase our traditional territory. The chief says the band will meet to discuss possible uses for the land, such as an ecotourism complex. The Greater Victoria Public Library Board has passed a motion in principle that could see the Emily Carr branch relocating to the Uptown Centre. The board's motion asks the District of Saanich to initiate lease discussions with Uptown. Municipalities provide library sites. The library board is responsible for the operation of the library facilities. The board says the current site in the 3500 block of Blanchard is in disrepair and does not offer adequate access for people with disabilities. And Uptown's just across the street. The motion could pass next month if Saanich staff determine that Uptown is able to meet all of the board's requirements. Supporters on both sides of the gay marriage debate spent the day crowded outside the U.S. Supreme Court in Washington as it hears a challenge of California's voter-approved ban on same-sex marriage. During the arguments today, several of the High Court justices questioned whether they should even be hearing the case. That would also mean that gay marriages will be allowed or the resumption of them will occur in California, but it would have no impact elsewhere in the U.S., the U.S. Supreme Court will make a decision later this year. Well, she is a celebrity gossip maven. She is an eTalk co-host. And Lainey Louie, just named yesterday as the co-host of the new CTV show, The Social, is in Victoria tonight speaking on behalf of the Faculty of Celebrity Studies. Lainey stopped by our CTV studios this morning to dish the gossip on her lecture series. She says gossip has become more in-depth and in turn more cerebral through the exploration of the celebrity ecosystem and discussions on the hottest topics and stars in Hollywood. Gossip will always be around because it's a way that we communicate. And the reason why gossip is immortal and why it exists is because it's how we communicate what we expect from other people. We just have different subjects. So 400 years ago, 500 years ago, people were gossiping in the court of Louis XIV. Today we're gossiping in Hollywood. The issues that you know, they're living through, like infidelity, motherhood, making choices in your career versus family, those are things that people live through every day, famous or not. This is a live, intimate traveling lecture series sponsored by Vitamin Water. It kicks off at the Oswego Hotel in Victoria tonight. If you'd like to find out more about the Faculty of Celebrity Studies, go to laneygossip.com. Well, this is a case of better late than ever for fans of Rihanna. The pop diva nearly three hours late for her show in Winnipeg last night. Rihanna and her crew say they were delayed for several hours by a stop at the border. She finally got on stage at about 11 o'clock. More trouble for this guy. A neighbor's accusing Justin Bieber of battery and uttering threats. Police were called to the singer's Southern California home at about 9 o'clock this morning. Cops say they're investigating the complaint. It's the latest in a series of bizarre incidents involving the young star. Well, finally this hour, a New Jersey immigrant says he's the winner of the big $338 million U.S. Powerball jackpot. And he's uh, all smiles, as you might expect. 44-year-old Pedro Quezada is from the Dominican Republic, and he says his priority will be to help his family. The jubilant deli worker and father of five bought his ticket Saturday at a liquor store in New Jersey just hours before the big Powerball draw. It's the fourth largest payout in Powerball history. He says he'll take the lump sum of about $221 million U.S. That'll amount to about $152 million after taxes. The New Jersey lottery confirms that the winning ticket was validated at the liquor store but has not made an official announcement to identify the winner. Teens from across Western Canada have a new appreciation for firefighting after an intensive week of training on Pender Island. 14 boys and two girls spent a week at the Gulf Islands Fire Rescue Cadet Camp. And during their 100 hours of training, the teens fought structure fires, vehicle fires, extracted people from cars, and executed high-angle rope rescues. It's you. Get, you get to new, meet new people, do team challenges, get to new experiences. I think it's really good camp. You, get, you learn a lot. BC's Fire Commissioner says the camp's a great opportunity for young people to learn what the fire service does and to consider firefighting as a career choice. There is something in the air right now around the Harbour City and it stinks. People in South Nanaimo are noticing there's a foul odor and some say it's so bad 
you might think it's dead animals. A regional district board member believes the rotting stench is coming from a composting plant at the Duke Point Industrial Park. That plant is a composting dump for both Nanaimo and the Cowichan Valley. The odor actually goes well beyond cedar. People in downtown Nanaimo are talking about it. It's in uh, Harewood, it's in College Heights. Uh, we've encountered it in other places and uh, even people in uh, Area C. Many of the people who've complained to me have said they can't even go outdoors uh, when, it, when it happens. McPherson says he wants the district to hire a professional to determine the source of the odor, then figure out how to get rid of it. The International Composting Corporation runs that compost plant and has two years left on a five-year contract. It says it supports the idea of the district hiring a professional.